back guys to the Spurgeon Piper. This is Wilson with you. So I'm back, different setup, and with the new setup I wanted to try something a little different. Uh, this week we have a tobacco review as I often do, but it has a bit of a twist on it. So I am reviewing GLPs, which I'm a fan of GLPs blends, and I'm reviewing Laurel Heights. But I'm not just reviewing this tin of Laurel Heights, which this tin is a 2020 blend. I am also reviewing a older tin of Laurel Heights and I wanna be comparing the two. So here I have a tin of Laurel Heights from 2006. And just to prove it to you, I have an image of the bottoms of both blends, uh, both tins for you, showing the age. And so this is a great opportunity to see everything people talk about, right? Age, how does age affect tobacco? And this is a great blend to do so because it is a primarily Virginia-based blend though it has some Latakia in it. So um, I'm grateful first off for Dan Gunther who sent this to me, this, this older tin and some old, newer Laura Heights to me uh, last August. I'm finally getting to review this on the channel, which I've been waiting for. And let's get into it. I wanna do as usual, give you background of the blend. I wanna give you a look at both blends. And then I have two pipes, which are fairly similar in model. Uh, what, they are the same model, actually. I have an Irish harp here and a uh, 2022 Peterson Christmas pipe. So two Petersons, same model, they are 68s, and we are going to look at both blends together. All right, so let's start first with background of the blend. So at tobaccoreviews.com we read that Laurel Heights has rich ripe red leaf forms the base of this wonderful Virginia blend. The flavors are deep and round with a smooth, natural sweetness and subtle notes of orange peel, roasted oats, leather, and peat. The smoke develops richness as it progresses. Delivering a long and clean finish that is never cloying or uh, syrupy with hints of malt and grapefruit for lovers of dark, darker, natural, unstove Virginias. And there's a note there that Gregory P's website mentions there's a trace of Latakia. Um, and so there is a trace, we'll jump more into that. But I just wanna point out, this sounds like a whiskey. Uh, so if you're one who likes to pair, uh, I'm not saying this goes perfectly with uh, a specific whis whiskey or anything like that, but when I read this, I think, hey, that sounds like whiskey notes or description of whiskey. So that doesn't really matter. I just wanna throw that out there. All right, so we continue reading. That is, of course, a brand, uh, it's brand the brand is GLPs, put out by Peas or blended by them. It's manufactured by Cornell and Dill and put out by Cornell and Dill. It is a Virginia Latakia blend and containing both Latakia and Virginia, a ribbon cut, two ounce tins and eight ounce tins are available. And if you are interested in getting your hands on some, you can find it at the Country Squire for $14. You can go over to tobaccopipes.com and it's for $12.96 at this moment. And then at B&B Tobacco for $11.99. Uh, this is not one of the more popular uh, uh, popular GOP's blends, so um, other places that usually carry GOP's blends, they may not have it. Just bear that in mind when you go searching. So with all that information, let me give you a look at both blends. All right, guys, here we have the 2020 and 2006 Laurel Heights right in front of you. Looks like different blends, doesn't it? So let me look at the uh, point to the newer blend here for a moment. You can see that it's a bit on the brighter side. Some red leaf, uh, some brighter looking leaf, and you probably couldn't even tell there's any Latakia in this blend whatsoever um, just by looking at the, the components itself, the blend itself. So both are on the dry side, but that's mostly having to do with it coming through the mail and the way I stored it, um, things like that, uh, especially the Laurel Heights. With age, you're probably gonna lose some of uh, the moisture, especially if you already open a tin. And then over here, yeah, we have the 2006. I mean, just look at the richness. I mean, how it darkens the leaf. It's really amazing. Same blend, but you can tell by the leaf itself, you can tell by the blend itself without smoking it, what age does. All right, so with a look at both aged blends, Let's get to the smoking. Um, I have them loaded up, as I mentioned, and in the fresher tin of Laurel Heights, I have it in a brighter pipe here. That's how I'm kind of uh, remembering which which aged blend is in which. And, and so in my Irish harp, I have the 2020, and in the 
2006, I have it in my uh, Christmas pipe. So just so you know what I'm smoking and when I'm smoking it. So I'm gonna go ahead and light up the newer 2020 blend and we'll get talking about some of the notes. So one thing I noticed is this blend tastes quite uh, bright. And so it has a lot of red notes or excuse me, red Virginia leaf in it, of course. Um, that's the base, but it tastes fresh. It tastes bright. Even with this three age, three age or three years age is a pretty good age on a, on especially a Virginia blend. It does a lot of, makes a lot of difference. But I immediately come to mind, or what immediately stands out is brighter notes. So we think of hay notes, citrus notes, things like that. There is certainly some fruity notes in there. I mean, the reds are the red are red red Virginias. You know, they they have the typical character, characteristics of uh, dark fruity notes, a bit of earthiness, a bit of spice. You know. Um, that word spice is thrown out, thrown out there a lot with different type of blends that have Perique or Dark Fire Kentucky or Oriental, but and they all ha are, have s distinctions. But Red Virginias, uh, darker stoved Virginias, uh, they they carry uh, they carry a unique spiciness to them, um, an earthy spiciness, and that does stand out. Now this is one of those blends where you say if they didn't mention Latakia, would the would there be Latakia? Would you taste it in there? And I, I and I don't know, um, but I do feel like I get a on the backside a, a, a hint of smokiness, like the smokiness that we think of with uh, well light English blends. So what would come to mind with this one would be like John Cotton Number One, which is one of the lightest English blends I've ever tried. There's an early morning pipe. Well, it's lighter than that if you never tried it. Um, it's a great blend, by the way. But this this kind of reminds me of that. The, the Latakia is is noticeable, not very, um, not on the on the forefront. It's in the back seat, and uh, especially you have a, a fine palate where you've been smoking blends for a while. You know, especially you have, you have um, some uh, interaction with Latakia blends. I think you'll probably pick it up. So. Um, that's what's that's what's coming out. Uh, a fine blend for sure. Um, this is a great blend. I'd be I'm happy to smoke it. I choose it over other blends like or like Golden Slice. Uh, you know I'm I'm always going prone. I'm more prone and and I have more enjoyment of darker red Virginia blends, stoved Virginia blends with deeper fruitier notes. That that's just always my inclination. At least it has been over the past few years. Uh, but. This still has a little bit too much of a, a lighter, brighter taste for me that uh, it's not going to be something I go back to normally. Um, happy to smoke it, but it's not going to be what I pick up first in my selection of Virginia blends, right? So, yeah, take that for what you will. A couple notches, by the way, on nicotine, a couple notches past medium, I would say. The room note is about average for a Virginia blend. It doesn't stand out in any way. Pleasant. I would say for any tobacco smoker, um, but uh, but yeah, if, if I had to give this one a score, this is a 2020, so let me remind you, that's what I'm smoking right here, 2020, I would give it like a 7 out of 10, uh, something like that, maybe I'm a bit lower, and, and so again, enjoy it, I would smoke it, it's not going to be something I go back to on purpose over other Virginia blends, so with that, I'm going to put this aside, and I'm going to go ahead and light up my 2006 so if you did not know this out of pretty much any other blend type uh, any other leaf component virginia blends are going to be the the blend type that is most noticeable in distinctions of aging it, it's it's going to change the most so which is another reason why i'm glad i have this blend to show you this uh, experiment on, on aging 
And let me tell you, big difference, big difference. That this blend tastes like, it tastes like, I'm not saying this is a exact, uh, exact comparison, but it reminds me of a, of an aged, um, Virginia, like a mature Virginia flake, like 2019 Sutliff's Kringle flake, which a lot of people liked. It's a, it was a pure red Virginia flake. That's what this reminds me of. Sorry, I keep having to light it. It's when you're talking, it, it tends to go out. Wow. So bright notes don't taste them at all. Uh, don't, I don't find them hardly. Maybe a hint of grassy notes. Citrusy because of those grapefruit notes coming about. I really like that. Um, I'm a grapefruit. I like grapefruit flavor. I like grapefruit juice, all that. So that's that's up my alley. But it, it's really more just deeper, earthy, fruity notes. Man, that's really popping out. The Latakia is really not evident at all. Um, and you know, for how dry this is now, I think it would be staying lit a little longer. In the retro hell, the spice is a bit more evident. The the leathery, uh, you know, coffee notes, those, those are more evident as well. And I think age brings that about a, a bit more, which makes sense, right? Because when we think of age, we think of something that's been worn. Um, so it kind of goes hand in hand. Yeah, this, this brings about some vinegary, deeper, fruity Virginia notes. I mean, what we think of an aged Virginia, boy, it, it's fan, it's fantastic. Um, if, if you could buy this as is, I mean, this would be a top Virginia blend for me. This tastes like some of the specialty blends as of late that have been coming out that have 18 years of age on it. So uh, it just goes to show you what age does. This is one reason why you should sell her. If you're someone who's wanting to stay in long term, if you're wanting to really have some fine blends to pull out of the cellar in the future, put, buy some tins, put them away, especially Virginia blends, Virginia Perique blends, you know, Virginia Burley blends, put them away and pull them out later, 5, 10, 15 years, 20 years later, and you are going to be rewarded for patience. Uh, part of the reason why we sell her is, well, what if it goes away, or what if prices go up, or what have you, and those are good reasons, those are reasons why I sell her, but this is showing you one of the other reasons, a great reason, just like with wine. You put it away to age for better tasting. So, um, if I had to rate this on its own, boy, this is a 9 out of 10. Easy. Easy 9 out of 10. Um, it's what I like in a Virginia. It has a bit of earthiness. It's not just pure sweetness. Earthy, leathery notes. Hint of grapefruit. But it's giving you that vinegary, fruity, stone fruit notes that characterize aged red Virginia flakes. So there you have, guys. I, I hope that's helpful. I hope that encourages you to put some blends aside and just, you know, Keep them there. Don't open them up. Leave them aside. Or if you've already opened some up, put them in a mason jar. Shove it away. Make sure that lid is tight and enjoy it in 5, 10, 15 years. And you will be rewarded with something that's really special. So if you have questions on this, if there's comments, if you have confusions, let me know in the comments. I'd love to help you if I can. And uh, you can always email me at thespurgeonpiper at gmail.com. You can find that in the bucket below. All right. Well, guys, that's all I have this week. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're blessed, and we'll talk to you very soon.